Hello everyone. Today's lesson is going to be about the structure of attitudes, specifically looking at the tri-component of attitudes, also known as the ABC model of attitudes. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the ABC model of attitudes, identify the three components, and then explain the relationship between these three components. What do you think of when you hear the word attitude? Do you think of the way your parents tell you that yours needs to be fixed? Think about these questions instead. What is the best age to get married? Should the school day be from 10am until 5pm? Who is responsible for keeping our local areas clean? Your reactions to these questions are what we call attitudes. We have feelings that are sometimes intense about some of our attitudes, but others are less important to us. Attitudes can be viewed as ideas that we hold about ourselves, others, objects and experiences. The term attitude can be defined in many different ways, but psychologists often define an attitude as an evaluation a person makes about an object, person, group, event or issue. In defining an attitude, the term evaluation refers to a judgement being made, either positive, negative or neutral, about some specific aspect of our lives and the world in which we live. This means that attitudes involve reactions, likes and dislikes, feelings for and against, preferences, aversions or non-involvement where an actual response is not necessary. Our attitudes can be broken down into three components, affective, behavioural and cognitive. To understand this model, we need to understand how we form attitudes. Attitudes are formed by our experience with particular people, objects or topics. The first component is the affective component. This categorises our emotions or our feelings towards a particular topic, object or person. This component is what helps us to shape our attitude. Our feelings are based on a judgement or judgments which result in a positive response such as favouring, negative responses such as disliking, or a neutral response where there's a lack of interest or concern. The effective component of an attitude is reflected by expressions such as, I enjoy eating Indian food, which is positive, I hate country music, negative, and I'm not interested in politics, neutral. It is also possible to have an ambivalent response to something. An ambivalent response is when you have both positive and negative feelings towards something. You might have an ambivalent response to swimming at the beach. You could like swimming in the water because it's refreshing, but dislike that you can't see through the water. The second component is the behavioural component. This categorises our actions or behaviours towards a particular subject, object or person. For example, doing aerobics to keep fit or protesting about the increase in hex payments are actions that are behavioural component of your attitude towards fitness and the requirement to pay fees for university. Behaviours can influence our attitudes towards topics, objects and people. The third and final component is the cognitive component. This breaks down our attitude into the thoughts or beliefs we have or form about a particular topic, object or person. Our beliefs are linked with our knowledge about the world and they develop as a result of our experience throughout the course of our lives. Some beliefs are based on fact, for example that the belief that the flu can be transmitted between people. However, some beliefs are false. For example, it is not true that all psychologists and psychiatrists do the same kind of work. Furthermore, some beliefs can be verified and others cannot be proven. For example, we could verify the belief that the flu is spread by asking a doctor. However, we could not verify the belief that there is an intelligent life in another galaxy. An attitude involving a verifiable belief is more easily changed than an attitude involving an unverifiable belief. Together, these components make the ABC model of attitudes. Let's put these components together into action to demonstrate how they work together by looking at my attitude towards birds. If we look at the affective component, I dislike and am fearful towards birds because in the spring they swoop us as we walk under trees. This shapes my attitude and my behaviour as I would intentionally walk 
away from trees with magpies with them and scream if one swoops me. Scream and the avoiding of the trees are my actions and therefore behaviours as a result of my attitude. In the cognitive component, my dislike of birds comes from the belief that they are violent and will swoop me if I go near them. This continues to influence my behaviour and feelings towards birds in spring. Think of an attitude you have and see if you can break it down into these components yourself. Let's apply what we've learnt so far. Consider the following attitude statements. Can you identify the affective, behavioural and cognitive components? So, Year 12 students should not have to bring a note when absent from school. I resent being treated like a child. The affective component is the feeling of resentment. Did you get that too? The behavioural component is likely to be not bringing a note from home when absent from school. And finally, the cognitive component is the belief that Year 12 should not be treated like children and therefore should not need to bring a note for their absences. Let's try another one. I'm not particularly interested in Australian rules football and I don't know much about it so you wouldn't catch me at a match. Can you find the components again? The effective component is the lack of care or interest in Australian football. The behavioural component would be not going to a football match and the cognitive component is the lack of knowledge of the game or the belief that it isn't an interesting game to watch. Can you see how they work together to shape our attitudes? Thanks for watching. See you next time.